Um, yep, so like Gene mentioned, um, this is gonna be majority slides today, just to give you insight into how version control is being used, why some companies just aren't using it, um, some gaps teams are experiencing within version control, and then really just feedback. Um, are you using it? What are the issues you're experiencing? What features you'd like to see in it? And that's really gonna help in two weeks us tailor the demo to show um, the feedback from this session. So switch to the next slide. Um, the, really the agenda, the agenda today is just intro to version control, um, why teams don't use it, the benefits of using Flowsome and Flowsome's version control. And then since Flowsome was built from the ground up to address some existing gaps, I'm gonna review the functionality of Flowsome um, and how we fill those gaps with our native version control and repository. Um, so switching over. So intro to version control. Um, why use version control? That's a hot topic with a lot of Salesforce development teams and new teams. Um, the most obvious one, a single source of truth for the team. Ideally, your master branch should be an exact replica of production. That way, if production ever needs to go down, you need to pull a source from um, your master, you have that source of truth. Um, the second one is parallel development. This is really difficult if you don't have any sort of version control. Parallel development streams without version control, you are going to experience overwrites. Um, you're not gonna be able to resolve conflicts. So using some sort of version control, you could have two projects in parallel, you could have five projects in parallel. It really enables collaboration, staggered deployments, um, <clears throat> and audit and audit tracking capabilities, which leads me into a third example, um, providing tools to identify, identify and resolve file conflicts. Um, if anyone is still working on change sets, you probably have firsthand experience of how painful this can be. Um, the amount of rework that's required, just figuring out what was overwritten, um, <clears throat> and then really just going back and figuring out that and resolving those issues. Um, the second one being within typical version controls within Git, those file conflicts can be pretty confusing. Um, false conflicts, is, as I like to call them, if you have a profile, for example, that's 400,000 lines, if you have a 3,000 line false conflict, it takes a lot of time to resolve, and there's still that risk for human error of unintended changes making it into your target work. Um, the fourth one, maintaining full audit trail for every single stage. This is case by case. Some teams, it's not a top concern, but for a lot of organizations, um, ones that are in the health, health and science, financial industry, and then like federal government, this is a top priority for them. Great examples, they wanna see who changed those components in their sandbox, maybe who committed them to the branch, who did the approval and who eventually deployed that. So really the segregations of duties that version control can enable and it's reportable. Um, and then facilitating collaboration and code review. I touched on that earlier. Um, maybe it's static code analysis. Maybe it's pull request and peer code review. Having those approvals in place to make sure quality code is making it to production. And that's not really the wild west and anyone can migrate to production at any time. Um, and then last but not least, making it easy to maintain and deploy different versions across test, staging, and production environment. This is very consistent with parallel development. Um, of course, you want to collaborate, but you don't want to overwrite your peers' changes, and there's use cases for having different versions in each environment. Um, so version control actually enables that with development teams, admins, and developers. Before I move on, um, any questions around why version control? All right, I'll take silence as a good thing. Let's move on to the next one. Um, so why are teams not using it? Um, one, the limitations of the tools they're currently using. Great example, change sets. Um, that's not gonna enable version control and really you don't know what you don't know. If you're new to Salesforce and you're just spinning up a new production org, you might not know that version control is best practice, that you need it. Um, and usually until you've experienced firsthand that your first production migration, you're overwriting half your components you migrated, it starts ringing a bell that those are the pain points and you need to implement some sort of system. Um, the other stigma around it is it's only for big companies. So usually if you have 100 plus developers, everyone recommends it, it's best practice. But then there's smaller orgs, maybe you only have five or six devs and admins and you think it might not be needed. Um, but ideally, whether it's a small, medium, large, a massive organization, a lot of the pain points around Salesforce, they're very consistent. 
code overwrites, lack of insight, uh, slower deployments, everyone experiences these pain points. Um, and then technical barriers. This was a big one for me, learning version control at first. Um, a lot of times, I say this jokingly, but seriously, um, I was an admin um, and previous job I started there. So when I first learned Git and version control, it was a steep learning curve for me. Um, of course, the technical architect took me under his wings and said, we'll teach you this, but it's a lot to learn. Um, and whether you're in a big or small company, sometimes admins just don't have the time. So that learning curve for Git, it can be steep and it can slow down deployment velocity and just take serious time to learn. So with that being said, key benefits to Flosum's version control. Um, for the viewers on the phone, if you don't know, Flosum's solution was built from the ground up to address some of these gaps that teams are experiencing without version control or maybe with their existing version control. Um, the first one being, as mentioned in the past, declarative version control with an easy user experience. So this is extremely useful for, again, admins and developers. Um, with Salesforce declarative developers, a lot of them don't have a computer science degree. That means Git can be a steep learning curve. Um, so making it easy with the user interface for all admins and developers to know what changes are making into production, what the differences are, and easy to identify the latest version um, is extremely helpful and just ultimately makes your life easier. The second one being with Flosum's version control, deployments are ideally easier and faster. And the reason they're faster is because Flosum only migrates the deltas. Um, usually within a typical Git flow, you're gonna migrate that entire branch. Um, so if you're in a huge project release, you can have slower deployments because you're migrating all components, um, could have more issues with that deployment and then more conflicts. So ideally using Flosum, you'll have less conflicts and faster deployments. Three and four really go hand in hand. Okay. Really quick. Um, so robust architecture with Flosum and the rich feature set. Since we were built from the ground up, there's really three tools that come to mind. Um, four, if we want to talk, go into details. Um, one is our merge conflict. So if you um, have experience with Flosum, we do a true semantic comparison. So even though if there's a ton of white spaces, maybe values missing in your source file, Flosum is intelligent enough to know to give a true one-to-one -one value, um, ultimately eliminating false conflicts. Additionally, with the rich feature sets, we can enable partial profile deployments. Um, now, a lot of other vendors can, but in my experience, Flosum is a lot more user-friendly where those components just need to exist in your branch and we can pull in the partial profiles. Um, two of my other favorite features dependency checks. So view dependencies within Flowsome, and we can, get into, we can get into this in the next um, meeting. View dependencies can give you the overall list of dependencies that could exist in your branch. Um, this is just super useful to one, either be proactive about your deployments and catch those errors ahead of time, or it could be reactive and help you quickly resolve those errors. Um, and then my favorite um, feature that Flowsome keeps constantly building out to address those errors is um, deployment analyzer. That's a very prescriptive tool, and it's going to show you what dependencies will fail in your deployment. So Flosum, even if your deployment does fail, we can help quickly resolve those issues for you. Um, one thing to note about Deployment Analyzer, we are constantly asking our customers, why are your deployments failing? What are the biggest pain points? And Deployment Analyzer is week after week a tool we are constantly building out to address some of the biggest pain points for customers, allowing easier deployments. Um, and then was that five and six also go together. Um, compliance and security, in today's climate, this is getting bigger and bigger. Um, within Flosum, we ultimately hand over that org to you and you solely own that. We are one of the only companies in the marketplace that will never have access to your repository, your metadata, your data, even your org. We don't have backdoor access for it. Um, and since Flosum is a managed package installed on that org, we follow all of Salesforce's security architecture and protocols. Um, and then the secure repository. So with that being said, your repository lives within Flosum. We are not relying on any other servers, third-party applications. It solely lives within your Salesforce instance and you control that 100%. Um, and then the last but not least is reduce cost of total ownership. So a lot of teams that start out on their DevOps journey usually adopt some sort of homegrown solution. Um, what a lot of teams don't account for is the cost of ownership. 
Um, figuring out that branching strategy, there's going to be bugs in your homegrown solution. So ideally, you need to have one or two developers constantly working on that. Um, that cost of ownership can be very high. Then looking at other solutions on the marketplace too, there are gaps within Git because Salesforce is different. Um, branching strategy, if you Google that, there's probably pages and pages of it. Everyone has a different idea for it because it is an issue. Um, and then just working on that branch maintenance, like what, like what add um, sandbox seeding, sandbox refreshes, it adds a lot of unnecessary overhead. So with Flowsome, we try and reduce that altogether or greatly reduce that with how our homegrown built from the ground up solution works. Yep. So I might've spoiled it because I went on a rant. Um, I probably talk, touched base on a lot of these in the previous slide, but really um, the key functionality of Flowsome's version control. Um, one is our native repository. This comes out of the box. It's really no setup, just create your own master branch. Um, but if desired, we can integrate with all flavors of Git. Um, I would say about 85% of our customers use our native repository only. The other 15%, it might be corporate standard or a or wide requirement that you have an external source of truth. So Flowsome plays nicely with existing Git repositories. Um, but our native repo, it can store all versions of metadata within there. You can go back at any time and look at the differences between the versions. Um, and then branching strategies. This is always a hot topic among development teams and how Flowsome can be fit into their process. Um, the short answer is Flowsome's branching strategy is super flexible. Um, you can configure this however it meets your needs, where a lot of other solutions, you need to fit into their process. If you break that process or you go out of sequence, you are going to have issues. With Flowsome's branching strategy, it can be very structured where you can lock down permissions, but it can also allow that flexibility. And one of the biggest examples I have are hot fixes. Um, within Flowsome, if desired, and I have to emphasize, granted, you do have the right permissions, you could take a hot fix branch straight to production. That way, the business gets their bug fix or enhancement request ASAP. Um, from there, you can keep reusing that same branch over and over. So ideally, you'll have less conflicts to resolve and faster deployments with that. Um, and then the key functionality um, for conflict detection and then code merging. This I mentioned in the previous slide is our semantic comparison. So with every single component within Salesforce, we have custom logic built in. Flowsome solely control, controls this and can make updates as needed. Um, so whether you're resolving conflicts or doing code um, code merges or peer code reviews, that same layout is going to be very consistent. Um, the great thing about this, as I mentioned, Flowsome controls its own destiny with code merges. So we did have a customer in the past um, give us some feedback about updating the merge logic for profiles. We were quickly able to adapt that um, and update that merge logic to give an easier experience for the user. Um, a lot of other tools, they are bound to get. What Git gives you is kind of what you get. You'll get a user interface on top of that, but at the end of the day, you're still going to have those false conflicts, which again, take time to resolve. Um, so I already touched on pull requests and code reviews. Um, and then synchronization of dev sandboxes. This again, I would put this probably second with the biggest pain points I've experienced. Um, so within a typical Git flow, you can absolutely sync sandboxes up within, um, Change sets, very, very difficult. You probably do sandbox refreshes quite often. And as you know, they cause a lot of headaches. There's always code overwrites with them. So within Flowsome's version control, and we can hop into this in the next call, you can keep reusing that same branch over and over. So maybe that release branch makes it to production. The business loves it. Developers and admins can take that release branch and back promote it, which is quite literally a deployment going backwards. Um, this makes it a lot easier, and we can ensure that there's going to be no code overwrites when back promoting. Um, within a typical Git flow, if you do merge that back promotion branch and then deploy it, if you're working on any current components that exist in that branch, it's definitely going to be overwritten. Flowsome can definitely catch those manual changes. That way, no current work is overwritten. Um, and then last but not least, rollbacks. Um, within Flowsome, rollbacks well, taking the snapshot of your target org is automatic. There is no action needed from the end user before deployment. And if you ever need to do a rollback, it really is a two-click feature. Um, select that target org you took it to, and then it can be a full rollback or a partial. Um, this is another big one with Flowsome where I think it's super easy to understand for all users at all 
technical abilities to understand exactly what's going to be rolled back and what's going to happen. Um, when I was learning reverting changes in a Git repository, I'm not going to say it was the hardest thing in the world, but there was a learning curve. Um, definitely trial and error for me a couple times, and there was um, times where I had some whoopsies for me. Um, so really, this is the last slide, and I wanted to open this up to everyone on the call. It one, get your feedback, um, how your current process is working, um, if there's any gaps, and then any feedback for this so we can take that, tailor the next actual video of Flowsome when we meet and tailor it to your feedback.